Good time of the day to everyone. My name is Oleg and today I'll be sharing some ideas from my research on digital bureaucracy or e-bureaucracy. The idea for such research comes from the point that during 2021, during this year, I had traveled to three different countries and in each country I had to communicate with government offices, uh, government agencies. Most of the time it was done through e-government portals and thus I had to learn about e-government services in three different countries. My initial level of knowledge about e-governments in these countries was zero. So the conditions, initial conditions for the research were pretty much similar. As a UX user experience professional, uh, my job is to observe uh, humans, people's reaction on services and goods we created for them in order to improve the services and goods. So basically, since my experience of dealing with e-governments in uh, all three countries were not uh, the brightest one, I decided that this negative experience can be combined together and put into research under investigation so I can come up with some ideas that might help to improve e-government services all around the world. Uh, what to do with bureaucracy? Uh, we all know that concept of bureaucracy was initially used in connection to government agencies. So here we have government agencies I communicated with. We have my willingness to conduct research and some other observations that led to development of this topic you will see in the next few slides. Here you see the picture from the past, checkpoint of the past, and you have the uh, security gates of present, of modern security gates. So basically, the passing security gates at the new times, modern times, supposed to be not that difficult. But eventually, when you try to register yourself with government websites, you find yourself in situation as you see on this picture. You will be asked many questions. You had to do a lot of paperwork, etc. So interfaces of e-government, especially e-government sites, of present become like a grandma at the checkpoint of the past. Mm. Here you see the situation that um, many of you experience at least once in a lifetime. When you try to register yourself with the website, you do something wrong and you even do not, not, do not know what you've done wrong. Uh, for example, a very similar situation to what is present in these pictures ha happened to me a few days ago when I tried to register myself with a shopping website here in Poland. I was entering the postal code the same as it done in, in a post office, but eventually the system did not accept it. I tried to uh, play with this, I tried to write it in one way, another way, and after all, I still could not register myself with the website. Here, you can see situation from very past, which is supposed to stay in the past, but instead it being transformed into electronic forms and we still have to get in line. Here's another example when you get in something what you're not asking for. On a government portal of Poland, where I'm supposed to get some e-government services, I have a kind of news agency it's not exactly what I'm asking for. And this is not the worst case scenario. If you uh, Google for it, you will find government websites all around the world that post not only the news, but also some advertisement from shopping, from sport events, etc. So this is not what we're asking for. This is another example of something that I consider we did not ask for. Pretty much everywhere, anytime we travel through the web space, we have to sign some agreements, privacy, consent agreements, and sometimes they much larger than this one. This is the shortest version. So basically, before agreeing on it, I have to read it, I have to waste my time, and my question is, why should I do this? I never want it. I did not agree on it. but eventually without signing it some website will restrict access to the content of the website uh, in my idea this is also something unnecessary because once we 
decide to go the, to the web page, uh, say to the government office or maybe shopping page, we already have idea what we can expect, what information we'll share there. And by going there, we initially agree on terms and conditions. So this is something that I did not ask for. This is another example of what we did not ask for, but website just requesting for. Uh, for example, once I was using e-government services in Ukraine, anytime I switched the pages, I had to sign in. Every time, again and again, during one session. So basically, it's not what I ask for. In my opinion, it's supposed to be not be. So we ask not only to sign the same website many times, but sometimes we even cannot do this because of some reasons that we even not aware of. So we do it wrong and we have to do it again and again and again. Uh, here you have some ideas what might happen to you and basically I believe it uh, happened to you many times already. Uh, the websites, e-portals, e-government portals just refuse services for some reasons again that we do not know or we did not aware of before we do so. So here's an example. Uh, when I try to register myself at the website, Russian website, so this is registration, a email name and password. So basically the website asking me to provide the five symbols for my name, but my name contain only four symbols. Obviously, I will not be able to register myself with this website ever. So this is another example, something that we found online and something is not acceptable. It's not the system was broken or something like this, but it was built in this way, built initially in and again, back to restrictions and some uh, terms and conditions. Uh, sites often ask us to do something that we did not ask for. Sometimes these terms and conditions are extremely large, long, and you have to waste a lot of time by going through it. Read, read and read. So they're not only doing our life difficult during registration or use of the websites, but they constantly root to us. We just do not notice it because we are accustomed to this. Uh, something again that's supposed to be not there. And uh, they constantly shout at us whether we doing something good or whether we doing something wrong or maybe just because the mistake was on the side of the websites. So also something that we have to consider. Why all of this happening? You can hear many diff different explanations. Some of them say it's probably greed of the developers that uh, who want to save money. Maybe they don't have money at all. Maybe they develop websites just because they like the process of developing websites for process sake. Or maybe they create websites only for themselves and they do not test it on us, on users, on end users. Maybe it because the client wanted to do it in this way, but eventually client has no idea how it's supposed to be done. But eventually all this come to the point that they don't really think about the people, about us, about end customer. Uh, what it all has to do with bureaucracy, with e-bureaucracy. So we, we, so we come to the point when we have to answer the question what e-bureaucracy is. And to be able to answer this question, first of all, we have to remind ourselves what bureaucracy is. And uh, the whole variety of interpretations of bureaucracy can be reduced to four main types. Weberian, Marx, Imperial and Realistic bureaucracies. Uh, bureaucracy can be used in its, uh, the term bureaucracy can be used in its positive and negative connotation. In its positive connotation, we understand uh, the same as 
Max Weber suggests a rational walk of organization or institutions in which uh, each element of this institution works as efficiently as possible. And basically, in, in its negative connotation, bureaucracy understood as a negative practices of uh, these uh, bureaucratic organizations or structures that goes against the, uh, the clientele, the people they serve. And very often we use the word bureaucratism to name these practices. So, so how do we know that bureaucracy is there? It exists. And moreover, how do we know that it's uh, somehow related to the websites or e-government portals that we are talking about? Um, Max Weber identified uh, some main features of bureaucracy, which in my opinion also valid for governmental websites. For example, specialization division of labor. Uh, we know that every government agency has their own websites and they provide only specialized services related to this agency. Uh, we also have to follow the clear rules and regulations of particular website. We have to register there and we can do only what is prescribed the website by the website. We also experience interpersonality of relationship. We have no access to government officials on the other side and all our actions are limited in terms of feedback we can provide to those officials. So uh, also uh, when we speak about the formation of bureaucracy, we also have some similarity in terms that it can be formed uh, around already existing bureaucratic organization. Uh, if we speak of governments, we uh, it is valid to say that this is bureauc bureaucratic organization from the very beginning. Whether it's good or bad, it depends how it performs, but eventually in its essence, it's bureaucratic organization. So it is logically to assume that e-government websites or portals will also be bureaucratic structures, which form around already existing bureaucratic uh, bureaucracy is developed, designed to solve people's problems. However, bureaucracy itself has problems. Some of them listed here below, uh, alienation from person, ritualism, inertia, lack of creativity. All of this leads to situation when uh, people's problems solved in not the best possible way, not in the most effective or efficient way. So basically this uh, problems of bureaucratic organization, uh, mispractices, we usually call bureaucratism, and uh, bureaucratism result in uh, ineffective work of organization uh, in terms of reaching its goal and objectives. So, so now, with all of this background uh, knowledge, we come to the point when I be talking about my research itself. As I said before, my research took place in three countries, Poland, Russian Federation, Ukraine, where I had chance to test e-government services. And as we see from this table, comparison table, the e-government services most developed in Poland. However, regardless the position of country on this comparison table, uh, everywhere I experienced some problem with e-government, which can be considered as a a bureaucracy, e-bureaucracy. So, so here uh, you have some ideas what I experienced, what problem I experienced in uh, each of three countries uh, where I use e-government services. First of all, you have, you can see some similarities in each country. I experienced some problem with registration. It was an easy procedure. I had to open bank accounts in Ukraine and in Poland to obtain e-signature or e-persona uh, in order to register myself at the e-government website. In Russian Federation, I had to travel physically to the office to confirm my identity. Um, some things, uh, certain tasks were not sold in Ukraine. I could not manage to transfer my passport, old-fashioned paper passport and 
old-fashioned driving license into electronic form uh, due to some problems in between online and offline services uh, basically they are not synchronized uh, I also had a problem with COVID-19 certificate once I did my second shot I had to travel physically to family doctor and to obtain a uh, real uh, ink stamp into my paper certificate before it was reflected in electronic form online. In Russian Federation, to obtain security national security number, I also had to travel in between offices, uh, making reserving online queue for offline appointment. And uh, since it was COVID situation, nobody expect me to come offline into the office. So basically I had to do it a few times uh, before it was done. And COVID-19 uh, certification. So after I, I got my second shot, I also wanted to have this to be reflected in my LEE cabinet electronic form. And basically it took me uh, approximately one and a half months before it was reflected. I wrote more than 10 requests online on the e-government website and these requests were transferred to Ministry of Health and back, Ministry of Health and back, so basically uh, really it takes one and a half months. In uh, Poland uh, also not easy to register itself. The interface of the website is uh, really difficult to understand even uh, having knowledge of the Polish language and uh, national insurance number per cell registration also was not so easy because uh, the e-government website allows me to print a physical form which I have to fill in and then I have to bring it physically to the office. After that I was waiting for a couple of days before it was reflected in my online cabinet. So basically here you've got uh, an example uh, of a uh, situation that happened to me in Poland. I'm a foreigner. I assume that I don't speak Polish language. So where I can get information on a government website, what I have to do? Basically, uh, here, in uh, it's information for foreigners, but it's all written in Polish language. So basically, uh, when I click the link, I go to the next page. Again, everything is written in Polish language. If I am the foreigner, how do they expect me to speak Polish language? And only on a third step, I can have some choices to choose in between. So I can choose English or Ukrainian or Polish language to go ahead with e-government services for foreigners. So after, so based on my experience of using, negative experience of using uh, e-government websites in three countries, I managed to define e-bureaucracy as a management system of decision-making, service delivery and communication that relies on artificial intelligence and computer-assisted data processing designed to improve and speed up the processes. And also, I managed to define e-bureaucratism as a futures and practices of organization of e-bureaucracy that make the work of an organization ineffective and inefficient. So, uh, given the definition of e-bureaucracy and e-bureaucratism, I also managed to highlight some aspects that might help you to identify whether e-bureaucratism exists in your e-government services or e-government system. So, uh, I hope you can uh, go through it by yourself. And lastly, um, to conclude, uh, similar to Max Weber, who in 1917 wrote that the future belongs to bureaucratization, I conclude that e-bureaucracy is our future. And this is up to us uh, who can make artificial intelligence of e-bureaucracy to be with a human face. Uh, after all, thank you for your attention and wish you to have fruitful conversations and successful conferences. All the best. Bye.